Just recently, Leslie and I were at a little sort of uh, short kind of conference, and this uh, CEO of a Fortune 500 company, was he was a development guy, real estate uh, development, big, huge company. He was talking about um, great leaders, and he said, and this is the other category I want you to look at, says there are um, salesmen and project managers. And uh, if you're gonna get something great done, accomplish something great, you're gonna have to have salesmen <coughs> and project managers. In fact, the real point he was making was is every elite leader is both has to be able to do both. <clears throat> a salesman is the person who's able to cast vision, talk people into something, paint a great picture of what something's gonna be like, that's a salesman. This is gonna be amazing, we're gonna do this, it's a great idea, they've got a, they've got a great purpose and a great idea of what we wanna see happen. Um, but then there's a, a project manager is the person who takes that great idea and that big picture thinking and puts it into achievable steps that build the project. So it actually happens. Um, again, what this guy was saying was, great leaders are both. You're able to do both of these. Now, I'm not suggesting everybody in here is supposed to be both of these or that it's even your calling to be both of these. What I am suggesting is that you have to be one of, or the other. Our organization is gonna have great ideas. Where we're, let's just take what we're pushing right now, the move journey. Uh, salesmanship of this is talking it up, explaining to people, giving clarity on what we're doing, casting vision of, of big uh, things we're believing are going to happen out of this beyond building buildings and you know those kind of things, property development. It's bigger than all that. It's like reaching souls. It's, 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 it's putting the, the dots together, connecting the dots for people to understand why buildings matter and, and, and uh, the, you know, raising funds matter, why giving makes a difference. And, all the big things that are gonna happen out of that. And then there's somebody else that's gotta like literally make sure their buildings actually happen and make sure that actual processes are in place to promote the, uh, uh, the, the vision of, of MOVE. You like the, so I'm talking about people that work in production and create and creative and the steps that have to be made there and the admin people that are administrating. Uh, Laura's doing a, 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 a young <coughs> work of this making sure we take the right steps to, to promote it well. And so, uh, does everybody feel like you understand the difference in a salesman or project manager? Yes. It's true in every, every walk of life. Do me this favor, tell me who in this room uh, you would say, now you may be both of these. I, I'll say for myself, like, I'm a natural project manager. That's natural and easy for me to figure out what needs to happen. I think in, like, I, I think in spreadsheet kind of, um, you know, like in outline form. When I think, when somebody says, we need to do this, I see I three, I three see three steps to make it happen. Like, that's just natural for me. I'm a more learned salesman. Over the years, I've, I've kind of been doing much more salesmanship than project management over the years. So um, I, I kind of uh, started here and moved to over here. You may be here for your whole life. And that's God's calling on your life. And you be making a mistake to try to come over here. You may be here for your whole life, all right? But um, these have to work together. There has to be some kind of a connectivity to it. I was talking to a guy that has an incredible salesman who can sell anything, and he sells things that are not even possible over here. And so he's got, he's lost, he's made a lot of personal money on some jobs that he sold, and then the business ended up losing money because there, there, there's no connection there. So today, I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes to work on the connection between salesman and project manager. So we'll start with this question. How many of you are more of a salesman than a project manager? Raise your hand, you know you're more of a salesman. All right, more salesman, all right. That's about half the room, that's great. Must be a really good leader putting this team together. <laughs> and who's more of a project manager in here? Yeah, so um, let me tell you how important this is. If you were to go to most churches, and the staff might be much smaller, obviously, in most churches, and ask them, like, <coughs> you, you'd ask, raise your hand, like, 90% of the hands would go up for one thing. Because uh, we, we're more comfortable with people who think like us, and see the world like us, and act like us, and have the same gifts as us. And so people tend to clump up in the same groups, all right? But 
with great intentionality, we've tried to really make sure that we have, you know, diversity of, of different opinions and gifts and abilities. Um, so, so that's really cool. Let's try this one more time in case you changed your mind. As you looked around the room, you might have went like, no, I'm not actually like those people at all. <laughs> Give you one more chance at it. You, you have permission to change your mind. If you feel like of these two, you're more of a salesman. Do you raise your hand? More of a salesman. You can look around the room and see if these are your people. That's good. Okay. All right. And then raise your hand if you're more of a project manager. Make it happen. Kind of. Are you sure, Jason? Are you sure you're a project manager? <laughs> all right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 10 minutes. All right, let me do this. Let me have all the project managers over here, all the salesmen over here. Who's <laughs> a salesman in here? Um, tell me something you learned that project managers do that maybe didn't come to your mind initially. Yeah. They're excited about the details. <laughs> <laughs> details, and and uh, and it's not just details. It's like woohoo details. <laughs> so that was. A, you're not excited about the details, no, right? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. You're halfway out in the lake in the canoe before you realize you didn't bring an oar, right? <laughs> this is uh, That's right. <laughs> so you're excited about the big picture, right? So would that be the other side of that? Yes. Big picture. And yeah, they right. think that similar to that, they think that giving task lists is the same thing as vision casting. So like ah. when I give out this task, this is how we get it done. That's how I have a vision. And to me, it looks like a whole lot of oh. tasks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just like Just. Have to have it excited. <laughs> So, just for clarity, task list is not the same as vision casting uh, most of the time. What, one more thing, are you, you're, a, you're talking to another project manager. That's right. That's exactly right. They yeah. say that they like, uh, it gives them life to like live out our vision. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they like to, could we say they like to put legs to the vision? And that is super fun, like awesome. Yeah. I learned Good. I heard something that is um, very like cerebral. Like they're actually thinking about. It's not a feeling. It's more information. Yeah. So they're. <laughs> so what, what you're saying is they're smarter than the salesman. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I mean, he did say cerebral. <laughs> Okay, you can tell he's been talking to a project manager if, he, if that word cerebral even came up. Okay, so project managers, tell me something you learned about salesmen. Yes, Denise. It was, it was funny. There was two project managers and a, and a salesman. We were so excited about the list and all this stuff, and then, and then she is a salesman, and she, she lit up when she started talking about people. Mm -hmm. and people. Oh, yeah. She's very people-focused. People is greater than lists. <laughs> details. It's an interesting idea. <laughs> we could learn a little bit about that. Okay, what else did you learn, project managers, about salesmen? Who's a project manager? You learned something about salesmen. They already knew everything. <laughs> but what do you mean by that? They already. They already. Uh, they measure the full scope of what they're dealing with. I mean, I really, I really do think that. Like, yeah. to be a project manager and to be good at We talked about uh, how there has to be unity with, with info, yeah. or it causes a disaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Ori, I don't want to spill this thunder, he gave an awesome uh, illustration if he wants to share it. But, uh, it was, but anyway, I do think that there, I, I was talking to Reagan, this is Reagan, and Ori, and I was thinking, oh, they, like, and I, just to be full, fully, I think this is a spectrum in my opinion. And I, I yeah. don't think I'm fully salesman. I think I'm closer maybe on the salesman side, yeah. more towards the center. You're definitely both. And um, the, but when I was talking to them, I could tell that they take like full measurement ahead of the task, like as a person. And like, it was important to both of them to be bought into the vision and, and I guess the person essentially. <clears throat> and so I, so I think they kind of already know what they're getting into to some degree. Yeah. If that makes okay. sense. Like, so they're forward thinking. They're forward thinking in that way. Maybe yeah. we could say that. Yeah. 
What were you adding to that, Pastor Ori? Uh, the analogy I looked at, it's like a, a rock climber. You've got some free climbers out there that, man, they're going crazy. And then also you got people that just put a stake in the ground and say, wow, yeah, that's an awesome mountain. Mm -hmm. But um, a healthy balance of this to me with the rock climber who's going up but wants to make sure and get it done, they put a stake in the side of the mountain. They put it in there. That stake is meant to secure that level right there. And once they've driven that in, the climber goes further, but that stake was never meant to stay in one spot. Once they get to that point, the climber looks and says, okay, it's time to drive another stake. So that, that stake is portable. Yeah. So that so was a good flexibility on both sides. Yeah, the project manager's rule of the stake, while the salesman has been talking we'll about how that can be frustrating because I thought, you know, if there's not a unity here, project manager is going to stay frustrated because the salesman like, I thought this was the most important thing last month, and now you're saying this is the, you know, and that can become frustrating if you're not in unity, and the salesman can feel held back by the project managers if they're not willing to, okay, like we've got our, our point, now let's move to the next level mm -hmm. and keep moving forward because both are important, and yeah. so we just talked about how there has to be a good unity. Yeah. The yeah, the project manager's already climbed that mountain two times, and that's where he's going to put all the stakes in his mind. He's already climbed it uh, for the yeah. ten times. He knows where every stake needs to go. <laughs> yeah. So the salesman takes off off the path. That's really frustrating for the project manager. He says, "Listen, well, I've already figured all this out. Where we need to put the stakes? Just go to those, right? That that's kind of how we do it." Yeah. Mine talked about God. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about holy things. <laughs> Stephanie. Yes, that's, in, that's important if you're a project manager is to let the dreamers dream because they have a capacity to think and see things that that you, you don't really have, it's not your calling necessarily to do. And if you if you use your gift to dull or, or, or hold back their gift, the whole organization loses. I, I've often said like, um, early, early on, really the first person that I brought on our team to think like me was Pastor Kip. Because we I didn't really know yet that you naturally gravitate to people that just think like you do, see like you do, and have the same gifts that make you comfortable. They don't challenge you. And, and I learned that I needed to have somebody that saw it differently. Uh, Pastor Kip was the first person I brought on the team. Um, and the way I would think about it was like I can get, I can climb the ladder faster uh, than, than most people I know. We're, we're, here we're, here's where you know, we're going to get up this ladder. Kip was the guy that helped us make sure the ladder was leaned against the right wall if that makes any sense. So the salesman has a, a vision to see the picture, the big picture, where you're trying to go, making sure you're doing the right things. And the project manager, like you get half of the first sentence out of your mouth, they have already run to get the ladder. And they're halfway up the wall. You know, I remember even when I was just a little kid, I was a little kid, I had a lemonade stand out by the road and it said, our, our Maybe it was tea, iced tea or something like that. And, and we had a sign that says iced tea. Well, it's the summer because we're out of school. It's in the south. And so there was no ice in the tea, right, because it melted. And there was a man that stopped by and got out of his truck, and he bought some iced tea from us. And he's like, hey, you know, you don't really have any ice in here uh, because it's hot and it's melted today. And, you know, um, so as soon as he said that, I grabbed the sign and scratched out iced and just <laughs> – T, 25 cents he's still talking to my cousin Kevin and he was actually explaining what you do is go back inside you, what your problem was you put all the ice in the tea and it melted get back inside get a different bowl for ice and in a different pitcher for tea and then you put the ice in the cup and you still have iced tea unfortunately I've already scratched out my own side <laughs> you know that is a typical project I was a you know seven-year-old project manager when I did that. That is a typical project manager. The second he or she gets like this much to go on, they might take off before they see the whole picture. And a typical salesman is sitting there talking to the guy 
you know, about iced tea for the next 30 minutes while 47 passengers, you know, uh, put potential customers go flying by. That's the salesman. And that's why we need both. That's why you need, if you're a great leader, you need to be able to see both halves of that. And if you are like Derek was saying, there's a continuum, like continuum meaning like across the top here, somebody is like right there, straight up born and bred and meant to be that. Somebody is straight up over here. And then there are different people in different places all along here. So if you're, if you're just supposed to be right here, man, you really need to know somebody that's like this who can help balance you. And if you're really meant to be way over here, you definitely need to know someone that, that lives in this arena and you need to be friends with them and you need to be talking to them often. Pastor Derek? Uh, we talked about in our group that we thought that maybe this could shift in different areas of your life and even different seasons, but especially different areas, for example, some of us felt the opposite, like whereas we might be salesmen at work, but at home we might take the project for manager role. Do you think that's that possible? Oh, I absolutely do. I think different uh, seasons of your life, even if you take like the spiritual gifts test that we encourage you to do, different seasons of your life, that those gifts will kind of just roll over and a different gift will take its leadership uh, capacity and certainly in different parts. Because if you're, if you're uh, married, if you're a salesman personality and you're married to a salesman personality, like somebody's got to make sure the bills get paid and the trash gets taken out, you know? So somebody's got to rise up a little bit more like that, you know? And if you guys are all project managers, you know, you might not have many friends. Somebody's got to be nice to people. <laughs> so you got to, uh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of joking. I'm talking kind of people that are way over here or way over here. Stephanie took offense to that. Stephanie's kind of like right here, actually. She's really very, you know, relational, but she's also a project manager. So you're somewhere on this continuum. You're probably not way over to one side or the other. Some people are, but usually you're somewhere kind of in the middle. All right, so it's just a different way to think about what you do every day, a different way to think about how we stay in unity and how we accomplish the mission. Um, and, uh, you know, here's something just from a personal perspective. I'd never heard this. i would never heard a guy stand up and say, like he quoted, this guy quoted from several leadership books. I had read every one of them. Like I, when he named the title, I already knew what he was going to say, you know. And, and I was just waiting on something I've never heard. And I never heard anybody say a great leader is both salesman and project manager. And it made me really start thinking about that. And um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. And when you learn something, one of the best ways for you to remember it is to share it with somebody as soon as you can, over over a cup of coffee or on Facebook, social media or whatever, quickly share, or if you, if you lead a team like I'm leading right now, share it with them because it's sort of codified in your own heart. And uh, of course it shares it with others and other people get to learn that, but it also solidifies it in your own heart. So, yes, sir. So let's say hypothetically, somebody were way over in one extreme or the other, <laughs> just, just hypothetically speaking. Would you, would you say in your estimate that it's worth time spending uh, working on moving closer to the middle. You know, there's some great leaders who would say that you need to spend 80% of your time in your strengths and 20% of your time in your weaknesses. There's some that that scale is way different. What, what, do, you, what do you say? About I, that? I, that's, uh, you know, I heard John Maxwell say it that way, and that's the way I believe it. You should spend 80% of your time in your strengths and 20% of your time uh, just covering your weakness. You want to have enough. If, if you're an incredible big picture person, you got to have enough of the details to be able to interact with the other humans, you know, like you've got to, you've got to cover that. You got to be able to return emails in a timely fashion. You got to be able to be uh, communicate details to people enough. But you're never going to be this person. That's just not going to be you if you're way over here on this side. And it would be a mistake to take your unique giftedness um, and and try to push it over to the other side. So you're going to do enough of this to get along and get, you know, not to torpedo your gifts. But you can have amazing gifts. I know some people who are amazingly gifted over here. I know some really super cool, amazingly gifted, administratively gifted people. They can't get along with others, you know, because they just are, they're just so into, you know, their details and driving the project that they don't have any personal, personal um, relationship skills. So it will torpedo, if you just stay all the way over to your side, it'll torpedo your ability to accomplish something. But I don't think you want to, everybody needs to get here in the middle. I do not think that's right. Be a mistake.